Good morning everyone, good to see you. Great to see you in church this morning. Our God has created a world, you and me and everything in it, that is destined to worship him. Which is why we have a precursor of worshipping him here on this earth, but one day every part of creation will worship him. Words the apostle writes to the church at Colossae. Just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. So let's gather our voices together this morning and worship God in the opening words of our first hymn, number 920. Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. Let's stand. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please like to take your seats or, or kneel as we come to a time of confession. Our Lord Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. But Lord, we acknowledge that we have not loved you with all our heart and soul and mind, nor have we loved our neighbours as we love ourselves. 
And so we confess to you now where we have failed and we seek your forgiveness. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The psalmist says, Our God is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. When we stumble, he is there to catch us. When we are weighed down, he is there to lift us up. And so be at peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Jeremiah. Set up road markers for yourself. Make yourself guideposts. Consider well the highway, the road by which you went. Return, O Virgin Israel. Return to those, these your cities. How long until you waver, O faithless daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing on the earth, a woman encircles a man. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, once more they shall use the words in the land of Judah and in its cities when I restore their fortunes. The Lord bless you, O habitations of righteousness, O holy hill, and Judah and all its cities shall dwell there together, and the farmers and those who wander with their flocks. For I will satisfy their weary soul, and every languishing soul I will replenish. At this I awoke and looked, and my sleep was pleasant to me. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel, and the house of Judah, and the seed of man, and the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring harm, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Each man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be put on edge. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with the fathers of the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After these days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall, and no longer shall each one teach his neighbour, and his each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue our worship of God. And um, yeah, come now is the time to worship. Every time, anywhere, any place is the time to worship God, but especially when we're joined together in fellowship and in church on a Sunday morning. Let's stand.
The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and that can be, pa- be found on page 1102 in the um, New Testament part of the Bibles. Jesus taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, 
Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. You Galileans, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for those words written by Luke about the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit's presence with us now. And Lord, wherever we are at in that, in our journey through life, in our journey with you, in our faith, Lord, please speak to us, please touch our hearts, please bless us with a revelation of your wonderful love for us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be with you this morning. It's actually really quite nice and warm in here for a change. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, you know, Jesus said this when he was walking along the road to Emmaus. He said to them, how foolish you are and slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And you know, this is why I absolutely adore the Old Testament, is because it's just full of Jesus. And Jesus opened the scriptures and said, this is all about me. And if we didn't have the prophecies throughout scripture pointing to the Messiah, we could never say that Jesus is the one that we have all hope he is. Because it was because he fulfilled the prophecies and when you read like the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew makes that very clear. This is to fulfill this, this is to fulfill this, this is to fulfill this. And that's why we can really put our trust in Jesus because these things happened a long time before he was born at Bethlehem. I'm actually taking um, our people at the moment through the book of Isaiah and it's been such a great book to go through because there are passages in Isaiah that we will know very well for unto us a child is born for example we will but you know the incredible thing is that Isaiah who lived over 700 years before Jesus was born at Bethlehem predicted so accurately and that's why we can trust our scriptures. You know, when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, that they were all, you know, will the book of Isaiah be there in its fullness? And it was. So they all went, oh wow, oh wow, this is further proof. The Christians didn't add Isaiah 53 while no one was looking. It was always there. And this is what is so amazing about scripture because it all interlinks. It is his story right from the beginning all the way through. And as we build on these truths about Jesus, then we can say, yes, if he fulfilled this in every single way. And for one human being to do that would have been totally and completely impossible. And it's so vast, it's so big. You know, and uh, like Jeremiah, you know, when he wrote these scriptures, it was at least 600, maybe 650 years before Jesus was born at Bethlehem. And God spoke through the prophets. 
And it was like God gave the prophets a, a view into the future. He allowed them to see as he sees. And God is outside of time. So he allows God, God's people to see and it shows them things that haven't yet happened and things that will never happen in their lifetime. And that's awesome, isn't it? Because I'm sure when these prophets wrote down what God was giving them, they had little understanding of what this really meant because they couldn't have done. And that's the, the wonder of the word of God. It is the eternal word of God. It's bigger than anything we can imagine. So, you know, that's why I love the word of God. I believe there's life in the word of God. And I believe that it all interlinks so beautifully. And that's why we can trust it. Jeremiah talks here about a new covenant that is coming. A covenant that wouldn't be as the old covenants were, but a greater covenant. And that's the covenant that we're part of. And as I was pondering on covenants, I just wanted to share with you um, some thoughts and just show you how Jesus fulfills everything in every way. Covenant is when, when God makes a covenant, it is very powerful because God will never ever break his side of that covenant. It's eternal. Mankind regularly breaks, but God never does. And covenant means everything that I have is yours and everything you have is mine. And that's so powerful when we think of what Jesus is saying when he makes covenant with us. Everything I have, I give to you, and all that you are, you give to me. I think that's a pretty good exchange, to be honest. You know, here we are, what do we bring? We just bring ourselves, but he gives us himself. Wow. Um, Views differ in, in scripture. There's always different interpretations. And I always say, I can only share what I understand today. The revelation that I've come to, the understanding I've come to. And uh, we, may, we may have different understanding, that's absolutely fine. But I can only ever share what is I feel I've seen in scripture, and I believe that there are seven covenants that God made. And the first covenant was with Adam. He gave Adam the right to rule and reign on the face of the earth. Adam gave that away to Satan, and I won't go into all of that, but that's why Jesus won it back and was tempted in the, in the same way in, in the desert. But that covenant, the right to rule and reign, fulfilled in Jesus. At the end of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, it says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he's won it back. He's won back the all authority. He's above all things. So the first covenant fulfilled in Jesus. The second covenant was with Noah. I promise that the world will not have a worldwide flood. This world will never end with another flood. It will with fire. But don't worry about the fire. That's okay. Hopefully we will have been gone long since. Um, so we won't go into all of that. But God has to deal with it at some point but right at the very end, and then he will make a new heaven and a new earth, so it all, all will be fine. Then he made a covenant with Abraham, and that covenant with Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, was that Abraham would be a blessing, that God was gonna bless him so much that he would be a blessing to all people. And the the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, they were meant to sh reveal God to the world. Now that only happened through Jesus. 
that fully happened through a descendant of Abraham, Jesus, who came with the good news of the gospel to open up the good news, the blessing to all nations, Jew and Gentile. So fulfilled in Christ. The next one was Jacob. I believe that there was a covenant with Jacob. You will no longer be called Jacob. I will call you Israel. And when Paul writes, he talks about the one new man in Christ, Jew and Gentile coming together in this faith. We have been accepted in, and John 15 also speaks of these things, the fulfillment is there we are now included in God's people and then the Mosaic Covenant where at the Mount Sinai whole scene there where Moses was given the law of how to live this life and Jesus came along and he said I haven't come to do away with the law but to fulfill it and then the covenant with King David King David, I make with you an eternal gov covenant. There will forever be a king from your line on the throne. Well, when Israel was out of the land, there wasn't a natural king of Israel, but there is a descendant of David, the one we know as son of David, King Jesus with the eternal kingdom that he comes. But now in the book of Jeremiah, he talks about this new covenant. And he says, this covenant is going to be so good. He said, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. So we no longer have to think, are we keeping the 613 laws of the Old Testament? Because now he puts it in our heart. He gives us the conscience by the Holy Spirit to walk the walk that God wants us to walk. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will be my people. And he goes on to say, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And exactly that was achieved only on the cross. And Ezekiel, who was, um, wrote about 30, 30 odd years later, wrote this, for I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will give my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws and so on. You see those things had never happened during their lifetime. There wasn't a time where God's spirit was going to be in people before Jesus came. And so this was a future promise. This was something that they, they knew the Holy Spirit came upon different people for different functions. But God is clearly saying, I'm going to put my spirit within you. And again, in the book of Joel, Peter uh, quoted on the day uh, of Pentecost, that all people could receive the Holy Spirit. And Jesus had been preparing them. He'd said, you know, look, I'm going back to the Father and I have to go back to the Father in order that this new covenant that the, the prophets spoke about can be fulfilled. It hadn't yet been fulfilled. But Jesus came with this new covenant. This new covenant that he... Um, and, you know, the whole process of covenant is so incredibly powerful. But at, the, uh, at the, what we call the Last Supper, which was the Passover meal, he, he said, this is the new covenant. You are going to take my body into you. You're going to take hold of my blood. And because of that, I am going to come and live within you. I will live my life in you and through you. 
And he then went on to explain about the Holy Spirit. It's better for you if I go because then you're going to receive the Spirit and the Spirit is going to be Christ in you. Do you think they really understood? I don't think so. And he said to them in that, scripture that Caroline read in Acts, you know, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. You know, I, I just want to encourage you when you read scripture, always ask, well, what is the promise of the Father? What was the Father promising? What he was promising was through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, and others, a new covenant a new covenant, Christ in you, the Holy Spirit being poured out. And I love the fact that Jesus thought, guys, don't do anything, just wait. Don't do a thing, just wait until you receive the Holy Spirit, because if you do things now, you'll muck it up. Just wait, because this is the promise. This is the new covenant. This is a better covenant. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we don't have to tick off all those laws that we have to think is, are we ever going to be good enough? Have we done enough to appease God? Have we broken down that barrier? And will God accept us? And the good news is we are accepted into the beloved. And it's got nothing to do with what we've done, but it's everything to do with what he's done. That's the good news. Because I don't know about you, I fail miserably, probably daily. If we had to add up the things that we do wrong, there would be a very big list. And if you think you don't do anything wrong, then you know, really, seriously, if you think you're without sin, you know, you, yeah, you are very much deceived. We all make mistakes and we can't make ourselves better. But God says, this is the gospel. This is the new covenant is to trust in me. And we can trust him because he foretold all these things. That's why we can look at our Bible and say, Do you know, this has to be true because it just couldn't be written by humans. It just couldn't because these things have come about because of Christ. He came to fulfill all things in every way and everything is about him, everything. The covenants, they still exist. He's fulfilled them and they're ours. Every promise, Paul writes, this wonderful scripture, every promise of God is our men in Christ Jesus. So you can, you can put your life on these promises and say, God, it is written and I take that promise for myself because every promise is our men in you. And that's the good news. We no longer have to trust ourselves. We're part of a new covenant, a better covenant, an eternal covenant that God will never ever break. And he says, come, come to me, come to me. That's all we have to do. Come, literally as you are, just come to me and put your trust and your hope in him. Amen. Jesus, we thank you that you fulfilled so much, Lord. And as we peel back your word, we see more and more and more, just as those disciples did on that road to Emmaus. Lord, when you revealed, look, this was about me. What, you, what was written was all pointing to me. And Lord, we're so grateful for that because that gives us the security to trust your word. And Lord, I pray that we will trust you more fully than we do now because we are partakers, not of a covenant that can be broken, but of the eternal covenant, which is sealed in the blood of Christ, that is eternal from now forever and ever and ever. And we just praise you and thank you for that, Jesus. 
and we put our trust and our hope not in mankind, not in our own efforts, but in what you have achieved already for us. And we give you praise and glory in your holy name. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and was conscious silent. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeded from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So it's, uh, it's good that we're a church family. We can come together and pray for each other. And so we are going to pray for Rachel. It's great to see Irene here as well. Um, I know it's... Uh, I didn't see you last week, Irene, when you were here, but I know you're going back uh, this week, aren't you, to Ireland. So let's pray. There's a few people travelling this week. Jill, you're going to Cyprus with family to see Nick there as the army chaplain. Um, Irene going back to uh, Ireland. So we're going to pray for you as you travel as well. But let's, let's bring our prayers together as we now just pray for those different things in our hearts. And I'll just draw them. I'll give us opportunity to mention all these things as part of our prayers. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the, your truths revealed to us in your word. We thank you for the wonderful, wonderful covenant and promises that you have made to us through your word that are sure and certain that we can put and back our lives onto them because you've given your life to us so that we can stand here, sit here, pray here, kneel here and give you thanks for the gospel the salvation, salvation through your death and resurrection. And Lord, we thank you that you told your disciples to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon them so they could preach to the world, to the ends of the earth. They could preach to families, tribes and nations. And Lord, we have done so ever since to a troubled world. And Lord, we pray that more people today, more than ever before, will gladly receive this gospel, the only true hope, and that they would offer their lives to glorify you. Lord, touch hearts here in our community, through our ministries here, through our schools work, through Gary, through our visiting through our pastoral groups and support groups, through Alpha. Lord, we give thanks for the gospel, for its power to transform lives. Lord, may you transform many lives for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Spirit of God, please, we pray, restrain forces of evil human and demonic from fanning the flames of war across the world and this morning we especially pray for the peoples of the Ukraine and Russia 
Please be with those who work to bring reconciliation, to make steps towards just and uh, towards a just and lasting peace. And this morning we, we especially pray for St. Andrew's Church in Moscow and especially for the leaders there, for Malcolm and for Alison who lead the English-speaking congregation there. They've asked us to pray and Lord, we specifically pray that they'd be a source of strength and hope for others in that place to make, help them to make right decisions, help them to be faithful in their praying, in their speaking, in their sharing. And Lord, we know you know all the practical situations they have to face. And we also pray, Lord, that Malcolm's new visa application will be a, a successful one. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. our prayer. Let's pray now for people and for situations uh, known to us that especially uh, need our prayers this morning. So I'll just give a moment so we can bring people to mind and situations to mind and and let's bring them to God either silently or please mention names out aloud. We also pray for Harvey. We pray for, thank you Lord, for Rachel having had the treatment she's had this morning, the diagnosis. Thank you Lord for the wonderful health system we have in this country and the blessing that is for so many of us. And Lord, as we just think of our church family, I, I just want to pray for safety in travelling as, uh, as families reunite after uh, time away. And Lord, may those moments be precious uh, time spent together. We pray especially for Irene. We just thank, thank you, Lord, for Irene, and also uh, before for, for Mike as well. Thank you for the part they've played here in this church family. Thank you for the love which they've given, the love which they've engendered, the love we can give back to them. And Lord, we pray as Irene settles in, uh, into a new life in, in uh, Northern Ireland, that you'd be uh, very close to her heart, and may she know that you are present with her uh, always, and we have a bond also with her through this church as well. And so just please be with Irene and Alison as they travel back uh, later this week as well. Lord, I also want to bring before you all those who are mourning the loss of someone they love, and especially I want to remember the family and friends of, of Peggy, who died this morning, and also the family and friends of Ruth, who died last week. Lord, please be with all those who are grieving the loss of someone. Be with Fiona as well, who grieves the loss of her uncle. Lord, may they know your closeness with them. May they know that you have also walked that path. And so, Lord, as we bring all these situations and people before you, bring healing, Lord, bring life, bring wholeness into all these people's lives, into all these situations that are known only to you in many cases. And we, and we pray, Lord, that you would be glorified. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, we rejoice at this sure and certain hope that one day everything will be made new and the whole creation will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay through the redeeming love of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us now offer to one another a sign of God's peace. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast, for here we receive you, here the memory of your passion is renewed, here our minds are filled with grace, and here a pledge of future glory is given, when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. from our service sheets we say together almighty god we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son jesus christ through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory amen
And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep all your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen. And so let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen indeed. <laughs>